Hi, I'm Dr. Bosworth and welcome back to my channel. This little video is to answer a question that I get quite frequently, which is, Doc, what's the deal with carb cycling once you're keto adapted? This channel is all about teaching patients and people about the ketogenic diet and using what I learn in the science world, translating it into improving your health one ketone at a time. I want to thank all those folks that have taken time to buy my book, to read my book, and to review it on Amazon. You cannot believe how helpful that is to an independent author trying to get the message through a mass of media. So thank you for your support. Now let's get on to our lesson. We're going to use a few slides to help teach this little bitty trick on what really happens when people carb cycle. So if you're new to the ketogenic diet and you went out and bought your ketone strips and you peed on a ketone strip for a few weeks and figured out how to produce ketones and you feel great. And then you start looking around and saying, well, not everybody's quite that strict, Dr. Bosworth. Do I really need to be that strict? You know, the 20 carbs are less a day. Some people get one meal a day trying to keep those carbohydrates under 20 grams per day. And then they start to say, well, isn't it okay to cheat? And then they start looking around at some of the literature and say, well, it seems like they still lose the same weight, even if they cheat and carb cycle just on the weekends. And I just do a really good job during the week. And I'm an internal medicine physician. I love the ketogenic diet and how much it helps my patients. But I think this lesson is really important when you're looking at the deeper health and some of the things that happen behind the scenes when ketones are used as your primary fuel versus when you flip back and forth to a bunch of carbohydrates and then back to a ketogenic diet. So I want to say thank you to Dom Diagostino for hosting the Metabolic Health Summit. This is where I learned this information. The uh, scientist and the leaders in the Applied Science Institute. Um, well, actually, I have to look at the name really quick. I said it wrong. Applied Science and Performance Institute. <laughs> they are the people who put these slides out and did a great job of teaching this lesson on the ketogenic diet. I just want to say thank you for your information and they get all the credit for the, the athletes that they study and the information that they use to help people like me to further educate patients like you and folks like you. All right, let's get on to this lesson. So we are going to push play about carb cycling on a ketogenic diet. So again, what is carb cycling? And that means that we're going to have you do a ketogenic diet, but we're going to use um, a few what they call cheat days. And um, I would say that that's times where they're not on a ketogenic diet. So again, Monday through Friday, these athletes were on a ketogenic diet. They all held to a pretty solid 70% to 75% fat, and they were pretty well matched in the people who were carb cycling and those who weren't carb cycling. Remember that the purpose of a ketogenic diet for my clinic is to put the flames out on insulin. And that's what these little pictures here are showing. Um, you can see that first image is of Mr. Insulin, who's got lots of flames around him. And those are ketone bodies pouring water on the insulin to decrease the inflammation. So when you have a hearty amount of ketones circulating in your system, we know that the chronic inflammation, and another way to say that is the chronic rapid aging of your cells is slowed down. You begin to age less quickly. Uh, you age more like a time, that, that, like time marches instead of a rapid aging cycle, which says at the age of 50, they look 70, even this, especially when you look deep into their cellular DNA. Lots of inflamed insulin is why that happens. So when ketones are around, it means the insulin is low. So with that in mind, let's go to the data. So here we have a graph. And on this graph, we have ketones on that x-axis. And we have time of Monday through Friday on uh, the y-axis. This uh, ketone, blood ketone level of just over 3, about 0 0.4, was considered ketosis, and if it was below that, they were considered not in ketosis. So these two little icons over here, the, the little ketone bodies are drawn in blue, uh, and they're really cute and full of lots of energy, and those using a carb cycling I drew in these red squares. Keep in mind that Monday through Friday, both sets of athletes um, ate the same way. 
Uh, these were not your chronically inflamed, overweight patients. These were folks trying to take their body mass indexes and lean up, lose some, uh, um, lose some fat, uh, find a better health, but not starting at an extreme obesity level. So they're not terribly sick patients. These are athletes just trying to take their athletic performance to the next level. So they were trying to lose weight. They put some patients on a ketogenic diet only, Monday through Friday and on Saturdays and Sundays. And then they said, the, these other groups, we're going to let you carb cycle, which means you get cheat days on Saturdays and Sundays. Now let's watch what happens. So if you look at the ketone levels on those on a ketogenic diet, they were solidly in ketosis. And this was Monday through Friday. This is over several weeks. They averaged these numbers over several weeks. So it wasn't just a one week study. But if you looked at those people that carb cycled by Monday, they were clearly out of ketosis. And it took till almost Thursday for the group in general to be in ketosis again. By Friday, they had a solid ketogenic state. Their insulin would have been low again. Their anti-inflammatory state would have been better. But then they went right back to carb cycling. And if you look over time, they were eating less carbs uh, than they would have in a normal week because Monday through Friday, they were ketogenic. But on the weekends, they would, they would binge. They would have cheat days. And I think it was half of their calories could come from carbohydrates on those cheat days. So here is where it draws your attention. So we're looking in kilograms, how much fat loss did they have? So if you look at the ketogenic group, we have a really solid column of three kilograms were lost over this study, which I think was about 12 weeks. But the carb cyclers actually only lost um, about um, one kilogram of fat mass. What was interesting is the scale changed on both of them the same. So both groups of athletes lost the same mass. It was just that the keto, you, the keto solid athletes, the ones who did not carb cycle, they lost three times as much fat. Now, why would that be important? Well, because if you're losing weight, if both groups lost the same weight, but those hanging out in a solid ketogenic state lost three times as much fat loss, well then, what did those athletes that were carb cycling, how did they lose the weight? Where did that mass come from? And the answer is, they lost muscle mass. When they were carb cycling, not only did they hang out in a much higher insulin state, much higher inflammatory state, but they were able to lose weight. Yep, those scales moved the same. But in those athletes that carb cycled, they sacrificed muscle loss. And to an athlete, that's a sin. So when you look at why this is so important, I find patients looking for an easy way out to say, doc, do I really need to be that strict with the ketogenic diet? And I'll tell you, the longer you practice the ketogenic diet, the better you get at reducing those cravings, finding a way to satisfy the pleasure of eating without adding carbohydrates, especially in a way that gets you really out of ketosis. When I counsel my patients as they march through their life trying to reverse chronic illness and they ask about cheat days, I tell them, life's going to hit you hard. You're going to have times where you fall off the wagon. It's going to be your birthday one day out of the year. <laughs> That's a great day to treat yourself. But it is just one day out of the year. And it's during those times when they carb cycle, when they add that carbohydrate back because the temptation was too much to say no to that their bodies will have an inflammatory state, their sugars will come up. But the longer they practice a ketogenic state, not only does it help their body continue to lose fat instead of sacrificing their muscles, but their metabolism grows stronger. Their ability to repair from immune responses grows stronger. I look at this question a lot and I point to the study out of this Institute for Applied Science, uh, <laughs> applied, si applied Performance, <laughs> I can read it again. Applied Science and Performance Institute. I want to make sure they get the credit. <laughs> so I, I look at the study and I quote it a lot. I made slides out of it because I think it's a really great teachable moment. When I look at um, those who say, but doc, is that really me? Those were athletes. I say, don't guess. Look at your own numbers. These weren't exciting uh, lab tests that they were doing. You can have a glucose monitor and a ketone monitor and watch to see what happens to your own numbers when you carb cycle. 
check that glucose, check that ketone. If you do the Dr. Boz ratio, which is taking your glucose and dividing by ketones, if you want to lose fat, you got to keep that Dr. Boz ratio below 80. I'm signing off. This is just a short lesson on why carb cycling might not be the best thing if you're trying to lose fat. I'm signing off, Dr. Boz, helping your health one ketone at a time.